Welcome back to you. Now we, go, we know this to case study of Sri Lanka. So let's take the situation of another country, which is Sri Lanka. It is an island nation having a population of two crores, about the same as in Haryana. Sri Lanka has a diverse population. Um, the major social groups are the Sinhala speakers, 74% and the Tamil speakers, 18%. Among Tamils, there are two subgroups, Sri Lankan Tamils and Indian Tamils. You can see the map to know the population distribution of different communities of Sri Lanka, how they have distributed. Sinhalas, this is Sinhalas and orange one, the Sri Lankan Tamil and uh, maroon one, Indian Tamil and pink, pink shade here, Muslims. In Sri Lanka, the Sinhala community enjoyed the bigger majority and imposed its will on the entire country. Majoritarian in Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka emerged as an independent country in 1948. The democratically elected government adopted a series of majoritarian measures to adopt a Sinhala supremacy. They also followed preferential policies that favored Sinhala applicants for university positions and good jobs. These measures taken by the government gradually increased the feeling of alienation among the Sri Lankan Tamils. Sri Lankan Tamils felt that constitution and government policies denied them equal political rights discriminated against them in getting jobs and other opportunities and ignored their interests. Due to this, the relationship between the Sinhala and Tamil communities become poor. Sri Lankan Tamils launched parties and struggles for the recognition of Tamils as an official language. For regional, regional autonomy and equality of opportunity in securing education and jobs. But their demand was repeatedly denied by the government the distrust between the two uh, communities turned into widespread conflict and turned into a civil war. As a result, thousands of people of both the communities have been killed. Many families were forced to leave the country as refugees and many more lost their lives. So, why have you learned uh, what have you learned from the two stories of Benjamin? Both the countries are democracies. But they dealt differently with the concept of power sharing. In Belgium, the leaders have realized that the unity of the country is possible only by respecting the feelings and interests of different communities and regions. This resulted in mutually acceptable agreements for sharing power. Sri Lanka shows that if a majority community wants to force its dominance over others and refuses to share power, it can undermine the unity of the country. Why is power sharing desirable? Power sharing is desirable because of few reasons. They are prudential and moral reasons. Power sharing is good because it helps to reduce the possibility of conflict between social groups. The second reason is that a democratic goal involves sharing power with those affected by its exercise and who have to live with its effects. People have a right to, to be consulted on how they are to be governed. So, Ali's suggestion was, Ali is not happy with the rules laid down by the Lebanese leaders. He is a
He does not follow any religion, neither his fathers nor his mothers. As per Khalil, an election or referendum should be held. As per these rules, the country's president must be into the Maronite sect of Catholic Christians. The Prime Minister must be a Sunni Muslim. <clears throat> the Deputy Prime Minister's post is fixed for the Orthodox Christians. The position of the speaker is for a Shia Muslim. <clears throat> Everyone should be allowed to participate. <clears throat> now we learn about the forms of power, power sharing. Power sharing. Most of you must think that power sharing is equal to divided power. Dividing power is equal to weakening the country. <clears throat> A similar thing was believed in the past. It was assumed that all the power of a government must reside in one person or group of person located at one place. Otherwise, it would be very difficult to make quick decisions and to enforce them. But these notions have changed with the emergence of democracy. In a democracy, people rule themselves through institutions of self-government. Everyone has a voice in the shaping of public policies. Therefore, in a democratic country, political power should be distributed among citizens. In modern democracies, power sharing can take many forms, like power is shared among the different organs of the government, such as the legislature, executive, and judiciary. This is called horizontal distribution of power because it allows different organs of government placed at the same level to exercise different powers. This separation ensures that none of the organs can organ exercise unlimited power. Each organ checks the organ, others. This arrangement is called the system of checks and balances. That is called, also called as horizontal distribution of power. <laughs> The power can be shared among the level government at different levels. A general government for the entire country and governments at the provincial or regional level, which is called federal government. Example, in India, we have central or the union government. Power may be also be shared among different social groups, such as the religious and linguistic groups. Community government in Belgium is a good example of this arrangement. This method is used to give minority communities a fair share in power. Power sharing arrangements can also be seen in the way political parties, pressure groups, and movements. control or influence those in power. When two or more parties form an alliance to contest elections, and if they get elected, they form a coalition and thus share the power. Such competition ensures that power does not remain in one hand. In a democracy, we find interest groups such as traders, businessmen, industrialists, farmers, and workers. Some other types of power sharing are referendum, decentralization, bicameral. So with this chapter, we resume the tour of democracy that we started last year. <clears throat> we start with two stories from Belgium and Sri Lanka. Both these stories are about how democracies handle demands for power sharing. The stories is some general conclusions about the need for power sharing in democracy. And this allows us to discuss various forms of power sharing that will be taken in the following two chapters. Thank you, children. With this, we come to the end.